Welcome to the FlowerSchool.com video library. I'm Leanne Kessler, Director of the Floral Design Institute, here to share with you our latest issue on the joy of working with fruits in your Thanksgiving arrangements. Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays, and it's so much fun to decorate. No, I don't cook, but I love to create the designs, and I love to eat. So what's better than Thanksgiving with the family and flowers with fruit? To create this arrangement, of course you need your flowers. Pick your favorites. It doesn't take a lot. Plan on about a dozen assorted blooms, maybe a few more, maybe a few less. It's really up to you. Just pick the things that you like and then prepare them. Make sure you use flower food in the water so that they'll last a good long time, and then let them set for at least an hour, and best would be if you let them set overnight so that they last as long as possible. Then you need your foliages. You need your produce. You need a container filled with foam. It's wet foam that's also been soaked with the flower food and then taped into place with waterproof tape. And when it comes to working with the fruit, a few more things. You're going to need six inch wood picks. This is how we'll anchor it into place. Oasis floral adhesive. This is what will keep it in place so that it doesn't fall apart when all is said and done. And then bind wire. I'm going to show you a trick that makes this work. Then lastly, you'll want the crowning glory because you'll spray your finished arrangement with that, including the fruit. But it's not to worry. It's non-toxic. So if someone comes along and sneaks one of your grapes and eats it, it won't be a problem. To prepare the fruit, the wood picks are going to anchor it into place. So you start by just pulling the picks out of the bundle. I leave them tied together so that they're controlled and just pull them out one at a time. That way you can keep track of where all the picks are. I remember the first time I took a rubber band off and they flew all over the place. Not good. Then they have a wire on them. I don't need that wire. So go ahead and cut that off. That's not necessary. And then insert it into the base of the fruit or the side. It's really up to you. Do you want it to go into the design upright? Then put it in the base. If you want to angle it a little bit, do it to the side. But insert it and repeat that. It really will be much more stable if you use two sticks for each of your larger fruits. Then to make sure that those sticks don't fall apart and fall out as the fruit dehydrates, seal it with just a little bit of cold glue right on the insertion point. That will lock the stick in there and it'll keep it fresh for so much longer because you've sealed the wound. With the pears, same thing. Just insert it, insert it, a little bit of glue. And the glue will set rather quickly, but you want to wait for, oh, 15 minutes or so to make sure it's really dried solid. For a smaller piece of fruit, like the lady apples, you can get away with just one stick. Just insert it straight in just like you did the others, but just with the one, and then glue it. Now the grapes, you're certainly not going to take each grape and put a stick in it. That's not going to work. And this guy, he is so big, you're going to want to cut him down a little bit so that it's a more manageable piece because it's overwhelming in its size. So I just take and find a spot and clip so I have a smaller cluster. And then repeat that again. Find a spot. And then by breaking it into three pieces, it's much more manageable. And then this is where you use your bind wire. And the trick with the bind wire is never take off this label. Pull from the inside. And again, you keep control of the bind wire. If you always pull from the inside, it's much better. Clip this off giving yourself a length of about a foot. And then wrap that, catching a lateral of the grape and then wrapping it around. And then the trick is to take another piece, go into 
the laterals, kind of weaving in here between the grapes. There we go. Then twist that together to secure it. And then when I go to work with this, I've got two pieces that I can just lay right over the bowl and they'll stay put. To prepare a base for all your fabulous produce, I start by putting the foliage in place. And I use a variety of different things. Leanne's rule of thumb is three or more foliages make your design so much more interesting. So for this one, I'm going to use some Ruscus with the smaller shiny leaf. Then I'm going to use some Salal with the larger leaf. And then I'm going to use Cedar. Yes, it's an evergreen. You think of it as being a Christmas green. But you know, the cedars, the firs, the pines, they really are beautiful through the whole autumn and winter. I like to start integrating them into my autumn designs. And then they just transition right on into your winter and holiday designs. So as I begin, just placing the foliage in, giving it cuts to bring it down, and then radiating it from the center point really quite random in my placement. Nothing has to be in any exact spot. You just kind of place it in and as long as it radiates from that central binding point, it'll work and be beautiful. You don't have to obsess of, should I put this green here or here or here or here? Put it wherever you want. So I'll put one over there and then I'll think, okay, well, I better radiate from the other side. Let's put it over here. As you can see, I've got the base for a round design. Now I'll go ahead and place the fruit into place. Now it's heavy, so I place it before the flowers. Grapes, just take and lay them across, kind of angling through all of the greens. Another one. I could even leave it part way into the center. It doesn't have to go all the way over the edge. Lift it with this green on that side. There we go. Cedar over here. And then just perch it. There we go. Getting it all in place so that I've got a little bit of grapes on several different areas. Then going back, my pear, oh, I love that pear, it's such a gorgeous color, inserting it right into the foam with both feet. And then I've got my apples. This one I did with the picks on the bottom so it could go a little more upright. Then I have the picks on the side so I can bring it in from the side and I go, hmm, where do I want it to set? Maybe right over here letting it come down over the container on the opposite side. And this one, I think I'll bring in right underneath my pair so that they perch next to each other. And then I have my smaller lady apples, maybe feeding it through the cluster of grapes, maybe grouping a couple of them together, finding a hole, there we go. On the opposite side. And then turning it to make sure it's balanced and ready for flowers. The arrangement is almost done. At each stage, you want to stand back and say, do I like it? So when it's just the greens, does it look pretty? Then if it does, go ahead, add your fruit. When you're done, if you like it, then go ahead and add your flowers. If at any point it starts looking a little funny, stop. Take something out and say, okay, now is that better? So that you don't move forward till you're really happy with where you are at this point. And I love my fruit right now, so I'm ready to move forward. Maybe a little bit of Alstroemeria. Now, Alstroemeria is an incredibly long-lasting flower. 
but the foliage is not. So you want to remove all of it. Take off each leaf. I know it takes time, but they look bad. They yellow, they fade so quickly, well before the blooms do. So if you remove them, it will look alive for so much longer. Then you can give it a cut, set it right down into your foam, finding the perfect hole. And repeat that. Making sure it's in there at least two inches so it will drink well. Coming out to the other side, finding a spot. Sometimes you have to lift and then place the stem, finding the perfect little hole there. Got foliage. There we go. And then let the grapes settle back down into place. And one more again, pulling off that green. And placing it in, making a little larger cluster on this side. Since I've got more fruit here, I'll put more of the alstroemeria on this side. Then I've got some beautiful miniature hydrangea, giving it a cut, placing it in. Don't need all these leaves, they're so overbearing. So just pulling off some and then leaving some and setting it in place. And then hypericum berries, so beautiful. They'll blend right in with the fruits, tucking them down, bringing them out over here. And lastly, a little bit of the leucodendron. With the dark color, the mahogany, it'll set off all the other flowers, and it picks up the interior color of my alstroemeria. So just placing a bit of that down in, quickly adds character to the arrangement. In the Pacific Northwest, the harvest includes apples and pears. That is really abundant here. But it also includes wheat. And so I thought I have to put some of that in here. This is green wheat, gorgeous color, goes so well with the mini hydrangeas. And I take it and cluster it in my hands maybe three pieces, and then pull off the side shoots that have started to fade, don't need those. Line it up to about the length that I want, and then give it a cut. Then inclination is to take the stems and throw them away, but don't. Add them into your hands as well, because they're part of the beauty, the sticks from the wheat. And then insert that whole cluster all at once, right down into the foam, and then repeat that, gathering a grouping of the wheat, give it a cut, go back, add the stems back into your hands. I'm going to pull that side bit off because it doesn't need to be there. There we go. And then I don't like this end, so I just cut that off of there, and then stagger these, give it a cut. And these are long enough, I can take another one and set it back in. And then once I have the cluster, go back and add that. And do this two or three times until you're done. To keep the finished arrangement fresh as long as possible, just spray the entire thing with your crowning glory. Get the fruit, the flowers, the foliages, absolutely everything, and then let it dry. It'll be clear. You'll never know. Now you know the secrets for adding fresh fruit to your arrangement. It's easy. It's just knowing the techniques and being able to find the materials to make it work perfectly. If you'd like more creative inspiration for Thanksgiving, check out our website. We've got the flower library and there's so many different Thanksgiving-inspired designs on there. It's at flowerschool.com. 
you like that so much and want more, we've got fabulous videos. Yep, DVDs that are full length, all about Thanksgiving. You can order those online as well. If you've got questions, don't hesitate to contact us. You can reach us through the website at flowerschool.com or by telephone at 1-800-819-8089. If you'd like to send me a picture of your completed Thanksgiving arrangement, I'd love to see it. Go ahead and send it to my personal email. It's leanne, L-E-A-N-N-E, -N -N -E, at floraldesigninstitute.com. But now, pretty much fun. I think it's time for me to go over and sit down with my centerpiece and eat an apple. Happy Thanksgiving to you, and have fun, and do something you love. <laughs>